Hello and welcome back to Small Room Audio. Today we're doing a versus video with two very highly regarded low-powered integrated amplifiers. We'll be comparing this one here, the Enulum 23R, with the Luxman 595 Special Edition. Why these two? Well, firstly, they're both absolutely fantastic. So if you're thinking, are these amplifiers good? That's in no question. They're both absolutely great amplifiers, but Many reviewers have said that this little Enulum here competes with amplifiers twice the price. So I've taken an amplifier which is almost twice the price of the Enulum and I've wanted to compare them both with each other to see whether that is indeed true or not, or under what circumstances that might be true, giving you a slight spoiler for some of the caveats later on. Anyway, what we've got here, starting with the Enulum, is a very tiny integrated amplifier. It is 25 watts into 8 ohms, 45 into 4, against the Luxman, which is a very big amplifier, which weighs 28 kilograms almost, and is 30 watts into 8 and 60 watts into 4 ohms. The differences between them, well, this is a little Class AB amplifier, the Enulum 23R, and the Luxman is a big, fat Class A amplifier. This is AB, the other one's A. I think I've said that right. Anyway, the Enulum. Let's take a tour of this 6,250 pound little integrated amplifier. First of all, it is quite simple. There's not a lot going on the front. We have a volume switch, which is actually termed a gain switch, um, which you can turn around and there's a little white mark around the side. Very simple. You have a remote control with it as well, which is actually quite nicely designed and uh, of a nice size. Doesn't look like it's been produced in a toy shop, unlike most amplifier remote controls. Uh, on the front you have a single-ended input for a uh, headphone. You also have a selector switch which also doubles down as a power switch. Very simple. Moving to the bottom of it. So on the bottom we have three uh, feet which attach onto it for vibration control. I've got to be honest, um, I mean I haven't noticed a sound difference with them off or on but it's nice that they now come with the unit and you know reduce any vibration you might have and on the back it is pretty simple as well you've got nice speaker terminals they're pretty chunky and do a really good job and simply put we have two sets of RCA connectors and in the middle you've got what's called an N-Link which I believe is going to be used as like a BNC connection for uh, the Enulum DAC which should get released later on in 2022 stroke 2023 when it comes out. So it's very simple here. There's no balanced input. There's no fancy kind of tone controls. There's nothing to use this as a separate pre or power amplifier. It is just a single ended in and then speaker terminals out. Pretty straightforward and simple. Let's compare it then to what you might get if you spend almost twice as much with the Luxman. I'm going to refer now to a bit of B-roll and also some pictures from the internet to help me because I've done my back in, to be honest. I turned 40 and I've become an old man and I couldn't lift the big Luxman into uh, the room with me here. So I'm going to use a bit of B-roll from my listening cave to talk you through what you get and also use some pictures from the internet to talk through it as well. So first up, you have a beautiful bit of casework in the Luxman. It is astounding in the, in the finish. It is like musical hi-fi jewellery. Now you're paying a big premium to get that and you would expect it to look nice, but it really is beautifully finished with that metal top and front and the anodized black down the bottom. You've got a very nicely and classy um, on button with the nice lights on the front as well. Uh, and you have line one, two, three, and four and two balanced inputs and also a phono, phono stage on the front. So if you are a vinyl lover, then you can listen to your vinyl using a very capable uh, phono stage. Not I've listened to that myself. I'm going to caveat that because I'm not going to review the phono stage part, but if you watch the Steve Gutenberg review of the Luxman 595, he obviously is a big consumer of vinyl. He says it's very good. I believe him. Anyway, moving down to the bottom, this is where you get into the extras. So you've got tone controls, bass and treble, very, very good, subtle tone controls. Even if you're putting them towards the extremes of the um, tone available, it never sounds weirdly unnatural or, or pushed. It is always really subtly done and very nice uh, to sort of tweak around with it if you want to. However, I, I will say most of my listening with the Luxman is done without any of the tone controls or loudness 
switched on it is line straight, which is the next button along the bottom. That just cuts out all of the uh, additional uh, tweaks that you might want to make to the tone. And then you've got loudness button, which is very good and useful. It basically increases the amount of bass you get on the mouse of treble when you've got low uh, volume listening. Now I did the majority of my listening to both of these amplifiers using a very sensitive speaker, which was the Klipsch Forte 4. And um, when I was using that, I didn't really need to use loudness on the Luxman because they already work pretty well with low volumes on both amps without that sort of adjustment. But when I switched to my Dynaudio Heritage Special speakers, the loudness button was actually pretty good and very nicely implemented uh, alongside the rest of the tone controls. We have a subsonic button for phono. We also have the ability to change this uh, to mono and also the ability to use it as a pre on its own or as a power amp if you've got a separate preamplifier. However, I think most people would just use this unit, the Luxman 595 Special Edition, as a very, you know, let's say it as it is, a very expensive but very well put together integrated amplifier. That's where its sweet spot is probably at. And you know, you're paying 12 grand for something, you'd want it to do pretty well as an all-in-one. And thankfully, it does that. You also have uh, a remote control that comes with it, uh, which is a bit more old school, but again, a decent remote control, not a crappy plastic one, which is difficult to use with horrible squishy buttons. This is a decent uh, remote control, which I'm pleased to say feels nice in the hand. And you also have a headphone input on the front, again, single-ended, like the Enulum, and we'll talk more about that later on because that features pretty heavily in the evaluation of both of these units as a versus comparison. So that's the front of the Luxman. On the back, we have the RCA inputs, we have the Phono input, and you might notice on the RCA input, the first one, line one, looks a bit different to the rest of the uh, RCA line inputs. Luxman state that this RCA line input one is a special copper alloy which combines the con conductivity of copper with the durability of brass. Maybe so, but it doesn't actually sound any different to the other RCA inputs, not to my ears anyway. I mean, it's nice that it looks all funky and swish, but um, yeah, I, it, so what? I mean, it's, they all sound good. That's the main thing, right? They all sound good, not to worry. Moving on across, we also have balanced inputs, which you don't get on the Enulum. So if that's important to you, that's great. I would say with the Enulum, it only has those RCA inputs, but in my experience, RCA inputs only, not a problem unless A, they're implemented badly, or B, you've got a very long run to, to sort of get on the wire. So if you want to run several meters, you know, four, five, six, seven meters between your um, source and your amplifier, then balanced is normally quite a good way to go. If, however, like most people, you're only going maybe a meter, then the RCA, do you know what, that's, that's all right. Now, it's down to you and your personal preference, but I've got to say for both amplifiers, RCA input works absolutely fine on both of them, but it's nice that balanced is available on the Luxman as well. You've got those uh, inputs for pre and main as well. So if, as I said before, you want to use Luxman for a preamplifier only or as a power amplifier, you can do that. You've got also the power input on the side. It's, it's as you might expect the Luxman to be laid out. What I would say is a trump card is the speaker terminals are brilliant, particularly if you're going to use spade connectors. They clamp down really, really nicely and they're, they're just really high quality feel to them. I actually use them as uh, banana plugs myself, but I was so tempted to switch to spades just in the way that they clamp in. It is very, very high quality indeed. Now, you're probably thinking, all right, give us a tour. Great, I could have probably figured that out for myself looking at pictures on the internet. Fair enough, but let's get to the crux of it. Let's compare the sound of the Enulum 23R with the sound of the Luxman 595 Special Edition Integrated Amplifier. Let's talk about the Enulum first of all. This amplifier excels at mid-range. That's its sweet spot. Mid-range is amazing through the Enulum 23R. It's very detailed, but more than that, it brings an ethereal quality. Voices in particular are absolutely stunning through the Enulum amplifier. I would almost equate it to an old amplifier that I used to own myself, which was the Line Magnetic 508IA. What's the, the key there? Well, that was a tube amplifier. And tubes, as we know, are normally fantastic at mid-range and 
this sounds very tuby. I mean, it's not fully tuby in its sound. It's almost got a slight flavour of uh, second order harmonics to it. It's, it's kind of, it's just really inviting, but it's not veiled, it's not muddy, it's not super, super warm. It's just very, very uh, emotionally charged in that mid-range. It, it kind of gives you the performer's um, full expanse of, of what they're trying to communicate to you as a listener. Now, that said, I wouldn't say that it's like a proper tube. It's more like a solid state which feels very tubey. It kind of leans into that quite heavily. And when we talk about Luxman, you'll see that that also leans slightly into tubiness, but not nearly as much as the Enulum. Moving up to the upper registers, everything is there, extends very nicely into the upper register and the treble region. It's never harsh. It's, um, it, it's very good at outlining the different players in the sound field. But I would say that it, it doesn't have that kind of sparkle and zing and sort of attack that some other solid state amplifiers might have. Uh, an example of that would be um, something like, um, what did I used to have? I, the um, Musical Fidelity M6 uh, SI, I think it was. I have to correct it if I've got that wrong, but that amplifier had a lot of attack and at times could be a little bit punishing of poorer recordings. This, on the other hand, is not punishing of poorer recordings. You can get a wave a little bit more here. I don't think it's rolled off in any way, but it's certainly, you know, it's very pleasant and easy listening through the enulum. You don't feel like you're missing anything, but you also don't feel like it's gonna kill you at any point, which is handy. Moving down to the bass. This is probably the weakest area of the enulum. For a 6,000 pound amplifier, it's still pretty good, but I wouldn't say it is incredible. The bass here has fantastic punch, it knows nice and deep, but it sometimes can feel a little bit thumpy. And what I mean by that is that it doesn't give you that articulation and detail that something with more control does. So when I used to have the uh, the Hegel H590, you know, that was incredible at controlling bass. The damping factor was insanely good. This will sound nice in the bass, but it will never grab hold of your speaker drivers and really you know, hold them to account. It will give you bass that sounds great in a sensitive speaker, like it does on the Klipsch Forte 4, but when I used it with the Dynaudio Heritage Specials, it, it, it was never sort of out of control completely, but it, it was a little bit sloppier than I would have liked. And I think that's the first caveat here, Think about the speakers you're going to pair it with. The more sensitive they are, the better it will perform. Not to say you can't run it with um, slightly more demanding speakers of sensitivity, but you need to bear that in mind. There is only 25 watts into eight ohms here. There's not tons and tons of power, and it is the base where you will notice that as an issue, but not through volume. This can go plenty loud. It sounds bigger and more expansive than an amplifier at 25 watts has any right to. So don't feel like you're gonna be kind of, you know, shortchanged on volume. You're just gonna have a slight issue in control on the bass and detail and articulation that you will do with higher power amplifiers. Take the C298 from NAD that I reviewed um, a little while ago. That has much better control over the bass than uh, this little enulum, which you'd kind of expect given its class D and the power output of, of that power amplifier. But the C298 doesn't nearly get anywhere near the emotional impact of the mid-range or even the kind of decay in the way it treats the, the treble in the enulum. So the enulum is a better amplifier. It's also an integrated, of course. We're not looking at an apple and an apple. We're looking at apple and a pear. But, you know, this does justify its price point in the quality that you're getting from it. Moving on to soundstage and imaging, it images quite big in, in a nice way. It almost feels very lifelike, but it may be a little bit bigger than that. Um, it's quite precise in the way that it layers that kind of soundstage left to right, and it's very wide. But really, the party trick here is the depth of the soundstage. It is quite cavernous. So again, giving you some comparisons, I had the Synthesis A50 Taurus, a tube amplifier for a similar sort of money, and that gave an amazing holographic soundstage. But the way that projected is backwards and forwards, whereas the Enulum doesn't really push the sound forwards towards you in the soundstage. It more just kind of leans it back into the, the background past your, your rear wall. 
Um, both of them have a great soundstage. The Enulum, however, is probably more of a tra traditional solid state, really well done soundstage, which just goes backwards. It's, it is really good though. It is very deep and it is quite addictive. So in summary then, the Enulum sound is, I don't want to use the word relaxed because it's not. It can give you good transient attack, but it it is easy to, to pair with speakers that might be slightly hotter. It is very, very, well, exceptional on the mid-range in terms of the texture, the detail, and that kind of emotional impact. And the top end and the bottom end are good for its price point, but not insane. A good start then, and a very, very respectable amplifier for its price. But can it be twice as good? Can it compete with the Luxman, which is twice its price? Let's find out. Let's talk about the Luxman then. Starting again, with mid-range, there's an immediate difference with the Luxman. The Luxman almost feels slightly more squeaky clean, more traditionally solid state. It is a smaller mid-range in the sound, but the more you listen to it, the more you feel like, actually, it's, it's, a, it's a purer sound, if you like. It, it doesn't feel like it's got that harmonic distortion like a tube amp. It does feel much more like solid state usually does, but, it is still very, very good in the mid-range. Uh, I think on vocals, if I had to pick between the two, I would go for the Enulum over the Luxman, which might surprise a few of you, but it really depends on the type of sound that you like and the kind of speakers that you pair with it. Because if you go for something like a Harbeth, for example, which already has that kind of real focus on mid-range, you might prefer the slightly purer sound of the Luxman to pair with it. Now I haven't got a Luxman and Harbeth speaker here with me right now, but I have heard the combination before and I know it goes really well. Um, you'd have to find out for yourself. I can only tell you what the Klipsch Forte 4 sounds like and also the Dyne Audio Heritage Special. And in both of the cases there, it did sound a little bit thinner and not quite as enjoyable in the mid-range as the Enulum. Things do turn around though as we go up to the upper registers. The treble on the Luxman is amazingly refined. It is so detailed, so extended. It's got delicacy. It's, it's like having that kind of fairy dust just sprinkled on the top. It's got sparkle. It's got more air than the Enulum. It does height better in the soundstage as well. It, it really is a fantastic performer for the upper registers. And that incredible performance also goes down to the lower registers. It feels like the Luxman extends lower than any limb. And in doing so, there's no thumpiness. You hear every last detail of the bass, every last nuance, every last pluck of a bass string and reverberation. It's almost like, well, it's almost like there, there are additional instruments on the track because you're getting so much more information in the bass than you do with the Enulum. Now, you might not notice that if you're not really into bassy music or you don't really care about full band music and you just want a vocalist and an acoustic guitar, for example. In those instances, you're not really gonna notice a difference in an A-B test, but if you have a full rock band with some banging drums or you've listened to dance music or EDM, you're definitely gonna notice that nuance that the Luxman brings. The Luxman essentially is a, is a more all-round performer um, but it doesn't have the killer mid-range that the Enulum does. So, you know, horses for courses, you've got to pick what you like. Talk about soundstage. Well, as I mentioned there, the Luxman brings height to the soundstage, which the Enulum doesn't. The Enulum still images up and down, but the Luxman really expands that up. That said, it's not as wide as the Enulum. It's, it's almost as wide, but it's not quite as wide. And the Enulum beats it on depth. It's not quite as cavernous. Um, it still does depth really well. Don't get me wrong, the Luxman sounds fantastic in terms of soundstage depth, but it doesn't push things back as far as the Enulum does. But that does mean that sometimes instruments sound quite far away with the Enulum compared to the Luxman. So again, it depends what you like. If you want to have it more where you're kind of leaning in rather than sitting back in your chair, you're going to choose a different amplifier. And ultimately, to answer the question head on, is the Enulum better than the Luxman, it is case dependent. It depends on the speakers you use it with. With the Dyne Audio Heritage Specials, the Luxman was definitely the better amplifier. I don't know if it was twice as good, but it was a better amplifier. 
with the Klipsch Forte 4, that, that gap narrowed a lot, but I would still say the Luxman was a better all-rounder, with certain types of music where things were less hectic and bass wasn't as important, then the Enlum came into its own. And, uh, well, in terms of the speaker amplifier, I would certainly say in those circumstances, high sensitivity speakers where bass isn't that important, the Enlum and the Luxman are definitely competing with one another and the Enlum may even be winning. So to say, do reviewers, when they say this is as good as something twice as expensive, you know, are they lying to you? No, they're not. They're just saying that's that's the circumstance by which they are judging this. And they're saying that's the kind of music they like. I think I've seen reviewers of the Enlum say how much they've enjoyed it and it's really moved them. And you absolutely get that from the mid-range. And I, I think if you value mid-range over everything else, and why wouldn't you in a way? Because that's where the heart and soul of music is. This is a killer, killer product. And we haven't even finished it because there's one more trick up its sleeve. I mentioned earlier the headphone socket on the Enulum and also on the Luxman. Let's talk about the Luxman first of all. The headphone on the Luxman, headphone amplifier, isn't very good. I would say that it's a bit pants, if I'm honest. I thought that the Focal Stelia that I ran into it, the uh, Audio Technica R70, they are decent headphones and they sounded muddy and bloated and not particularly articulate at all through the Luxman headphone amplifier. I go as far as saying, why even bother putting that on the integrated amplifier and almost sullying the rest of it with something that sounds that poor. I really was very disappointed at the quality of the headphone amplifier. I have a, a decent enough headphone amplifier in my Mola Mola Tambaki, and the Tambaki amplifier isn't known to be, you know, top of the range or anything. It's kind of average, if you like, but that destroys the Luxman headphone amplifier. It is a bit rubbish. Conversely, on the Enulum, and if you know anything about Enulum, you'll know that they uh, were associated, I won't go into the details, but associated with Bakun, who are, for intents and purposes, very well respected for head amps, head stages. So therefore we expect this to be pretty decent. It's better than pretty decent. The headphone amplifier in here is one of the best I've ever heard. And I'm not a huge headphone enthusiast, but I can appreciate the quality that this puts out. It is everything that I've described about it in speakers, plus a little bit more, because that bass control that is missing from the speaker output suddenly comes back with the headphones. Because it's quite a powerful headphone amplifier in here and it can even drive Susfara headphones. If you know about headphones, Susfara are really, really hard to drive. This can pretty much drive anything. Um, and that control in the bass comes back. You have the mid-range magic, you've got a really good treble and you've got a fantastic layering of the soundstage. I would go to, as far as saying that anyone that is mad into headphones might even consider buying this on its own purely for that head stage. It's that good. And anyone that listens 50-50 between headphones and speakers, well, now it really is an amazing value proposition because you're getting almost best-in-class headphone amplification and almost best-in-class speaker amplification all in one very nice, very tiny Class AB box. However, does that make it better than the Luxman? No, not if you're a speaker enthusiast, because if you only listen to speakers and your speakers are more um, demanding, or you like bassy tracks and you want an all rounder for all different sorts of music and you love the front of it and the fact that it doesn't matter that it's big, heavy and traditional class A and pretty much needs a nuclear power station to run it, the Luxman then becomes the better amplifier. And to be completely open and honest, the Luxman is what I'm going to buy over the Enulum. But I have huge respect for what Enulum have done here. And if you like headphones and speakers and mid-range, look no further than the 23R because this is a very special piece indeed. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. Thank you very much for watching. This was Small Room Audio. Please do like and subscribe. We are pretty much on 5,000 subscribers. Let's keep it rolling. If you like what we do here, we'll do what we can to put out more content soon. And we'll see you back here very shortly.